Hi, this is Scott Garibay, and today we're going to talk about Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition. We're going to talk about the Sage Vice, Sage Advice Errata Comet. Man, this hit with so much impact. It, it is the talk of every D&D 5e commentar- commentator, and it, you know, with very few exceptions at the macro level, all D&D, at the macro level, D&D, com- the 51% level, you know, you are an exception if you're not talking about this, right? That's not a big deal. You know, 5e commentators talk about 5e news. That's not the real news here. A ton of non-D&D fantasy tabletop role-playing game commentators are talking about 5e news. They're talking about it so much that their own people are saying, why do you keep talking about this? Perfect example of what I want to talk about today is Aaron Pedantic addressing this exact question, right? So he does non-D&D fantasy tabletop role-playing games, right? And uh, and his people are like, hey, why are you talking so much about Sage Advice Errata? It's 5e Errata. Why, you know, if you're if you're an, an actual non-fantasy D&D, uh, you know, uh, commentator and player and, and part of our community, why are you talking so much about 5e stuff, right? Which is exactly what I've been addressing. Like, and, you know, 5e is so big, it just has this orbit and it pulls everything in, right? And so he gave a great answer and I want to talk about his answer, right? So one, I really appreciate that he had the honesty to talk about. He's a really interesting guy. So one, he's young, right? And a lot of young people, they, you know, what happens with young people? They see Matthew Mercer, they see Critical Role, they see D&D, right? They're like, D&D is it. Like, that's the deal, right? None of these other non-fantasy tabletop role-playing games have anybody who even has one, you know, has as much charisma, intelligence, and confidence as Mercer has in his pinky, right? Like, I'm, I, you know, I can't get 10 minutes into any of these other ones, but D&D has Mercer, right? And has them has them on lock, right? Like, you know, his books come out through us, right? Like, you know, so like, you want Exandria? You can like, Explorer's Guide to Wild Mount, Exandria, Call to Netherdeep, right? Like, you know, if you want Mercer's best books, you're going to buy them through, through Wizards of the Coast because essentially, you know, uh, Mercer is a horse in their stable. Uh, you know, that's the issue. It's not the other way around. Don't get it twisted. Don't think Critical Role is bigger than D&D. D&D, Critical Role, they switch any other game, their numbers drop in half or more. So Aaron the Pedantic said, "Hey, yeah, I get it. You got a valid point. If I'm a not, if I'm a non D and D fantasy tabletop role playing game player and commentator and game master, why do I talk so much about Five E? Right? I really appreciate his honesty and his willingness to address the question, the elephant in the room. Right? And he said, "Here's the issue. I can play my own game. Right? But my kids. The, the reason is my kids. I got kids. They're gonna play someday. Right?" And they're going to play a game that I, you know, that while 5e's um, options aren't going to touch my table, they are going to touch my kids. And and that's the issue. He realizes when his kids go to play tabletop role-playing games, even though they've watched their father for 5, 10 years playing, you know, crusty, black and white, terrible layout, you know, uh, relics, right? They're going to be attracted to what they see in an FLGS that has actual art that costs hundreds of thousands of dollars and has the best artists in the world, the best layouts in the world, and frankly, the best writers in the world that are talking about the things today. No, no, you know, no Gen Z or even you know Gen after that is going to be uh, is going to be attracted to the old, crusty, dusty stuff he's playing. He knows it. Right? He said it. You know, he's like, my kids are going to play D&D 5e, and that's why I care about it. And I really appreciate his honesty, right? And so what I, so, you know, just hearing Aaron's fantastic video, right? Um, <clears throat> what really got me to really understand what's happening, like, and that's just it. Like, it, we're, we live in complex times. What's happening, right? That's, we're always asking that question because it changes so fast, Right? So let me explain to you what's happening, right? So non-fantasy D&D tabletop role-playing game game masters and players, what are they do, doing? They're like, hey, look, here's this orange. I found it. Uh, it's old, and half of its juice is, is drained, right? But guess what? If I hold it up above my mouth and I squeeze it, there's fresh cold juice that comes out, and I could still enjoy it. And they're 100% right. That's what non-D&D fan, fantasy tabletop role-playing games are doing. 
they're squeezing the orange into their mouth for a little more juice, right? What are you doing when you play 5th edition? You are planting a new orchard, right? You have the trucks. They have the trees on them. You have teams that are planting them. You are building the future. While others are squeezing the last bit of juice out of a half-juiced orange into their mouth so they can get a little bit of entertainment, when you play 5th edition, you are planting the new orchard. You're not squeezing a half squozen, uh, you know, orange into your mouth to suck down a few more drops. You're making it so a thousand, ten thousand people will drink fresh orange juice from a golden crystal carafe. That's the difference. You choose, right? You choose D and D five E. You deal with the problems of Wizards of the Coast. You engage with actual, real, cultural now questions. You change who you are, where you need to change. You become a better person. You don't give up. You don't seek comfort. You build for the future, right? You take the slings and arrows that come from being on the bleeding edge, right? You don't seek your own comfort and just squeeze a few more drops, right? You get the trucks going. The trucks have the trees. The trees are gonna go in the ground with the teams that you've built and that you're planting those trees. So while others are sucking down a few drops from a half squoze and orange into their mouth and getting a little enjoyment, you're doing the hard work, right? You are building a new orchard and you know what every orange on those trees will say? Gary Gygax, his legacy remains. It doesn't die in 1985. That's the difference. Thank you very much, Aaron Pedantic. I appreciate honesty. I appreciate uh, videos of actual importance. I appreciate transparency because we pay a terrible fright price for it today. We really do, right? So I applaud your courage. I applaud your analysis. I applaud your honesty. I applaud your, your care for your kids, right? And I applaud you giving me clarity what's happening. I'm going to stay on 5e where I can build the next orchard. I'm not going to stay on... Uh, non D and D fantasy TTBRG, so I can squeeze, squeeze a few more drops from my half squozen orange into my mouth. Thanks, Aaron. I really did enjoy your video. Thank you guys for letting me share this with you. Uh, please consider like subscribing and have a wonderful millennium.